In this video, we want to take a look at those last two functions we talked about that we showed were inverses of each other, and we want to see what they look like in terms of their graphs. How do the graphs compare? Are there things that are similar? Are there things that are different? Is there a pattern that we can notice between a function and its inverse? All right, so I have listed in blue f of x as 2x plus 4. Remember that f of x is the same thing as saying y, so we can think about this in slope-intercept form, where this is your y-intercept. And this is my slope, so we're going to start at 0, 4, with a slope of 2. And we're just going to plot these points so that we can draw our line. All right. So here we go with f of x. Now, g of x is 1 half x minus 2, so that's going to start down here at negative 2 with a slope of positive 1 half, so he is going to be this guy. And now let's connect these dots. Now, a couple of things to point out here. I want you to see how their intercepts compare to each other. So for f of x, you see that it has an x-intercept at the ordered pair negative 2, 0. And it has a y-intercept at the ordered pair 0, 4. Now let's see how that compares to what we have here for g. So g has an x-intercept at the ordered pair 4, 0, but it has a y-intercept at 0, negative 2. Notice how alike these are, except for one thing. When you go from the blue to the pink, things are swapped around. Basically, here's what we have here for inverses. X's become y's, y's become x's. So this x-intercept corresponds to the y-intercept, check this out, Instead of it being negative 2, 0, it's 0, negative 2. The y-intercept matches up with the x-intercept for the inverse. But instead of the y-intercept here, which is 0, 4, you have an x-intercept of 4, 0. And you'll see this happen all over the place. So up here, we have this ordered pair in blue for f of 2, comma 8. Now, take those, those coordinates and flip them around. And it becomes 8, 2, which we see right there on G. And you're going to find that to be true on all these guys. These guys, going from F to G, you take all of those ordered pairs and you just flip them around, and you're going to have new ordered pairs for a point that's going to be on its inverse. And one of the neat things about this is that if you were to draw the identity function, now the identity function is just y equals x, and y equals x is this slanted line with a slope of 1 that goes right through the middle of that. You're going to find out that this acts as a, as a mirroring line. So what you have on one side, you have reflected on the other side of this. Okay. Now you also see that any time these graphs are going to intersect, they're going to intersect on that um, on that line of symmetry so I think that's pretty cool uh, yeah so if you turn this sideways it's kind of hard to really see see this but I want you to notice that the distance from here to here is one unit and it's the same to get to the other side right here those are the exact same number of units from this y-intercept to the identity function is, is two, lot of, two little diagonals and two more diagonals to get over there. So you see how these guys are the exact same amount apart from that identity function. And you're going to find that to be the case with all functions when graphed and compared to their inverses. Now I said before that x's become y's, y's become x's. And so let's think about what that means when you go from a function compared to, to its inverse. Okay, 
So whatever you have for your domain really corresponds to the exact same thing for the range for the inverse because the domain is the set of x's and I said x's become y's, y's become x's so your set of x's will match up with the set of y's for the inverse. The same way here if you talk about the range for a function the range for a function will match up with the domain for its inverse. Pretty cool, right? And as we saw above, if you have an x-intercept with the ordered pair a0 and a y-intercept with the ordered pair 0b, what can that tell us about the function's inverse? Well, an x-intercept is going to match up directly with a y-intercept and you swap these ordered pairs around. Again, x becomes y, x becomes y, x becomes y. You, the x's become y's, y become x's. That's what we're saying here. The y-intercept, so the y-intercept is going to mean that you have an x-intercept at the ordered pair not 0b, again swap the coordinates, and you would have b comma 0. If you have a function that has an inverse, and you have a horizontal asymptote, and suppose the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to d. That would correspond with a vertical asymptote of x equals d. If you have a vertical asymptote that says x equals c, that means that you know for its inverse there's a horizontal asymptote of y equals c. Again, I can't stress this enough that when you go from a function to its inverse, x becomes y, y becomes x. Ordered pairs get flipped around. The domain and the range kind of get exchanged, so this guy's domain becomes the range, the range becomes the domain. If you have an x-intercept, it becomes a y-intercept for the inverse, and a y-intercept becomes an x-intercept. Okay, That's the pattern, and that's what we're going to see. In the next example, I'm going to give you a graph, and from that graph, we're going to determine what the inverse is. So stick around.